good one while you're at it. I'm glad that didn't happen on my run. That Dawson gang is plenty tough. So I've heard. Change to the stage to gun sight. the new ranch. You know, I want my wife to have only the best. I beg your pardon. Smile, don't look around. Pretend you know me. Just wait till you see that new pony I bought you. Oh, Elmer, you're so generous. I hope our ten children will be as kind and considerate as you are. So it's ten now. How time flies. Sorry we can't go more deeply into this. Hey, stop that man! You know what you've done. What? You've helped him escape, that's what. Help? Yes, help. I had him dead to rights. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have got him. But no, you're one of his accomplices. His accomplices? I don't know what you're talking about, but you're without a doubt one of the rudest men I've ever met. Uh, no, no. You knocked me no, down. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, lady, whoa, wait. I happen to be Captain Street, a railroad detective, and that fellow is Jim Parker, a notorious outlaw. Saved you and your ten kids from an unhappy marriage. Marriage? Ten kids? What's he talking about? Oh, oh, it's nothing. It's just a little joke between us. He's one of the gentlemen I met on the train. Oh, I see. Uh, how's Grandma and Gunsight been getting along since I've been away? Well, your grandmother's all right, but the town isn't. Well, what's happened? Well, I just don't quite know myself. I've been away up to Dodge City. But from what Andy tells me, Gunsight has become a hangout for thieves and killers. Our town? Oh, I can't believe that. That's true, Miss Jill. Gunsight swelled up like a poison pup. Well, come along, Jill. Get in. I'll soon take care of this when I get home. Giddy up. Agent, I'd like to send a telegram. Ever heard of Jim Parker? Huh? What's that? Jim Parker, the outlaw? I should say I have. Is that renegade around here? I, I don't know. I just happened to hear his name mentioned. Is he really as bad as they say? Much worse. He's a tough customer. Sure hope he stays away from gun sites. Hey, pull up, will you? Hey, Whiskers. Say, would you mind turning that scatter gun? What do you want? A horse give out a ways back. I'd like to buy a ride to gun sight. He looks honest enough. Faces fool you. And he's taking me apart? Let's flip first so we can get going. All right. You lose. Okay, but you'll have to give up your guns. What for? Road agents. Well, I'm not a road agent. Maybe not. But since these parts have become the camping ground for every scallywag from Hades to breakfast, you can't take any chances. 
Sounds reasonable. Well, all right. Shall I say your carcass inside? There's plenty of room. Howdy, folks. Howdy. Get up. Folks, line up nice like and kindly put your contributions in here. This will be the sorriest day you've ever seen. I'm George Layton. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm Harvey Dawson. Well, I own the town of Gunsight. I'll have you. All you'll have is a pair of wings to float to heaven with if you don't close that trap and get busy. Why, this is an outrage. Dad, I'll have Dad, you. Dad, please. Hmm. How about a little kiss while the gents donate, huh? Here's my money. Coach, both of you. Get going. Some folks. Smith, Elmer Smith. Sounds right homey. Uh, my name's Layton, George Layton, and this is my daughter Jill. Howdy, Jill. Howdy, Elmer. It's all right with you folks. I'll ride up front with the driver. Sure, but I want to see you again when we reach gun sight. Okay. Young fellow, Mr. Stetson's plumb off to you. The name's Andy Klein. Glad to know you, Andy. What'd you say the name was? Didn't say. It just don't make sense. What? Elmer. Elmer? Yes. Anybody tack a name like that on that rip snorter ought to have his head examined. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. <laughs> I just happened to think of something very funny. <laughs> Get those kids out of there and clear this street. You'll get shot. Take a 
see you coming? Come on, get those kids out. Spotted the stage, boss. Yeah? Good. Now me and the fellow that owns this town can get down to business. I don't follow you. What about? About you wanting to buy this bird. Yeah, why? When we can move in and take over the whole shebang any time we want it. But not legally. And that's the way I've got to have it. You know, I've been holding out on you boys. But I think it's time now to let you in on something. The bullion wasn't the only thing we got out of the Union Pacific. Here's something worth a lot more. Now, this is a blueprint of the new branch line the Union Pacific is going to build. Its terminus is gun sight. Say, that's going to put this town right on the map. Put it on the map. It'll make it one of the biggest shipping centers in this part of the state. It may one day be a metropolis. Now, do you understand why I've got to buy it legally? Yeah. But how come that Leighton doesn't know all about this? According to a letter that came with the plans, they're going to keep it quiet until they start construction. Oh, say, boss, how about us giving the stage a welcome when it pulls in? No. I'll beat it. Whoa! What happened, Andy? You're late. Held up again. They got Pinkley. He's inside. Give me a hand. Glad you're back, Mr. Layton. Oh, howdy, Pendleton. Jill, this is Dick Pendleton. He runs a gun sight target, our local newspaper. How do you do, Mr. Pendleton? It's a pleasure, Miss Layton. Looks peaceful enough. Like a volcano. The latest eruption occurred just before the stage pulled in. Well, where is everybody? Have they deserted? No, but staying off of the street has become necessary to life and good health. Why? I don't understand. Suppose we go over to my office. That's a good idea. Andy, find Sheriff Plenner and send him over to Pendleton's. Okay. Frank, I'm a chuck of this job and I'll go back to my feed barn. I want to die of old age, not buckshot. Well, I can't say I blame you, Andy. The company here is about to close up its office anyway. It's a darn good idea. What happened? I blasted the lawless element with printer's ink. And they returned the compliment with lead. Well, something's going to be done about this. This is an outrage. What's the matter with the citizens of this town? Can't they look after things while I'm gone? What are they, a flock of sheep? I go away for a couple of months and come home to find gun sight, a sink of iniquity. Did you send for me, Mr. Layton? Oh, there you are, Sheriff. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, just this, Mr. Layton. It's, it's useless to arrest murderers when they're released with a $10 fine. Released with a $10 fine? Who's responsible for this? Why, Judge Smythe. Judge Smythe? Gun sight had no judge when I left town. It has now. Well, who appointed him? The territorial governor. Territorial governor? On whose say so? Uh, Dalt Higgins, as far as I know. Judge Smythe! Dalt Higgins! Say, what is this? I turn my back and what do I find? People I've never even heard of running the town that I own. Just who is this Dalt Higgins, anyway? Allow me to introduce myself, Mr. Layton. I am Mr. Higgins. I've been waiting to talk to you on business. What possible business could you have with me? I want to buy gun sight. What you? Oh, so you want to buy gun sight? Well, gun sight is not for sale. It never has been, and it never will be. Perhaps your father will have reason to change his mind later. You'll find me in my saloon. His saloon? Do you mean to tell me that Sam Lower sold out to him? 
At the point of a gun, if you want my opinion. What about the other storekeepers? Buffaloed completely. Well, he can't buffalo me. Where's that fellow, uh, Jones, Brown, Green? You mean Smith, don't you, Dad? Elmer Smith? Yes, that's the one. Well, where is he? Find him, find him. He's the man I need. I'll show them who's running this town. If they want action, I know just the man to give it to them. Hi there, Smith. Hello, Andy. How about joining me in a bottle of sarsaparilla? I'll join you, but... Uh... <laughs> we'll have anything you want. Thanks. Hey, bartender. I'll have a glass of that there stomach blister. Straight. Oh, great stuff. Mr. Smith, I just made a deal for us. Us? I told Frank, the express agent, I'd keep on driving stage of Bureau Shotgun. Can't take you up. Oh, shucks, then I quit. Sorry, I might be leaving town. That's a wise decision, Mr. Smith. What was? You're leaving town? The big bad bandit you dusted off happens to have a brother, and he's tough. Uh, he's looking for you. It's all kill you. That's just what I'm aiming to do to you. Hold it. I want to talk to this man. Talk fast, Higgins, because I'm burning him down when he moves. Uh, that's all, Slade. If there's any burning to be done around here, I'll do it. Twenty bucks, plenty backs down. That's a bet. Now, now, don't try anything. I'm the sheriff here. Go crawl in your hole before I chase you there. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. Can we talk this thing over? Planner, you yellow coward. I bet 20 bucks you'd take him. Now go on or up. Oh, oh. I win. It was murder. Cold blood and murder. I saw it all. And you and that man are going to stand trial. Well, first you have to arrest us. And that's a job for the sheriff, and he's dead. Smith, will you take the job? Pays 200 a month and five dollars extra for each arrest. Go ahead, Smith. You can get five bucks for arresting me. And five more for me. Take the job. I want to kill you anyway, and I'd sooner gun down a sheriff. I'll take that job. Unless you want to die, drop that gun. Pick him up and carry him to jail. I believe you guessed wrong, Mr. Smith. Do you show me the way, Mr. Layton? With pleasure. Get going. Go sober up Judge Smythe. Ah, good morning, Mr. Higgins. Good morning. It's late afternoon. Oh, my goodness, so it is. So it is. Ah, Tempest Fugits. <clears throat> uh, Latin, time fetches. Uh, nothing like a good drink to uh, stimulate a man's liver. Uh, you'll pardon me just a moment. <sighs> oh, it's, it's great, great for the liver. Never mind your liver. Have they got everything straight? Oh, in June. <clears throat> Precisely. In you go. Oh. oh. Ah, oh, good morning, or uh, at least good afternoon. I, I presume that you're Mr. Layton, uh, and you're the new sheriff. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. Uh, Judge J. Frothingham Smythe, at your service. Oh, it's too bad about Sheriff Planter. Yeah. Oh, it's most lamentable, most lamentable. But as a servant of the people of this city, I will see that justice is done. 
Oh, yes, justice will be done. Swift and sure, my friends. Oh, yes, swift and very sure. <laughs> <laughs> This court is now in session. Judge J. Frothingham Smythe at the bar. Uh, at the bar of justice, of course. Uh, Sheriff, would you bring in the prisoners? What's the use? I beg your pardon, sir. What did you say? Nothing. All right, you two. Well, uh, Sheriff, what are the charges? Murder. Murder? Oh, that's a very serious charge. Uh, Johnny Slade, what have you got to say for yourself? He pulled a gun on me. Uh, uh, is that true, Sheriff? As far as it goes, Planner started to draw in line with his duty. But he did start to draw a gun. <coughs> the, uh... <coughs> All right. Clear case of self-defense. Prisoners acquitted. But I am going to find the defendant $25 for disturbing the peace. This is outrageous. A travesty. Challenge. I'll find you for contempt of court. Now, you go on over there and sit down. Next case on the docket is Fletch Hobbs. The charge is also murder. But let it slide. Hmm. Uh, what? What? Why waste time? You ought to work with a mask on. What's that? You question my integrity, my judicial honor? Not for gun sight, where a man's life is worth $25. <laughs> Why, that's contempt of court. I'll fine you. The Comstock load couldn't pay for all the contempt I have for this court. <laughs> Case against Fletch Hobbs is dismissed. Court's adjourned. Oh, thank you. I told you you'd guessed wrong. Smith, where are you going? I'm resigning. But you can't. You're the only man around here that has the nerve to stand up to these renegades. Useless energy, the setup you've got here. You might as well padlock the jail. Smith is right. Without an honest judge? Well, I'll get an honest judge. I'll write to the territorial governor telling him. If you went to him direct, you might get quicker action. You're right. I'll get the next stage out. But, Smith, promise me that you won't leave before I get back. I'll be around. Gonna be big doings tonight. You ought to come if you can get yourself a gal. Maybe I can. I sort of figured you could. In the meantime, how about coming over to my place? I'm a mighty good cook. Good idea, Andy. After that talk I had with Jay Frothingham, I need something to get that bad taste out of my mouth. Right this way. I said, what's his name? For who, Granny? Who? Why, the man, of course. Why, well, there isn't any. I, I met a couple of fellas in St. Louis. Oh, I don't mean them. I mean that terrible bandit you told me about. Why, he isn't terrible. He's... I thought so. Oh, Granny. He's the most mystifying man I ever met. He's Jim Parker, an outlaw, and yet... Oh, I don't know. I just can't make him out. That's bad. What? When a man has you guessing, there's only one way to handle him. How? Oh. Marry him. Me? Marry an outlaw? Don't hold your nose so high, young lady. Your grandfather stopped the stage to get a minister to marry us. And after the ceremony, he held up the passengers to pay for the honeymoon. <laughs> ah, Granny, you're wonderful. <laughs> Nala. Oh, fiddlesticks. 
Hey, what makes you so sure that he's calling on you? Huh? Something? You see? Oh, my dress! Oh, Granny! Granny, you let him in! <laughs> oh, a woman's intuition hasn't changed a bit in the last 60 years. Good evening, ma'am. I, uh, I come over to, uh, well, um, I thought maybe I'd, uh... <laughs> yes, I know. I'm Grandma Layton. Jill's expecting you. Expecting me? But she didn't know I was coming. <laughs> Young man, you have a lot to learn about women. Come in. Yes, ma'am. I reckon I have. I don't see any notches on the guns. Notches? Oh, uh, I cut some money, I had to get new handles. Fine evening, Mr. Smith. Yes. Pull your jaws together, young man. <laughs> go on, go on, have a good time. Oh. <laughs> good night, honey. Well, you look good enough to eat. Night, Mrs. Layton. Good night. Outlaw. Fiddlesticks. Good evening, Mr. Pendleton. Good evening, Miss Layton. Smith, I gotta speak to you. Can it wait? I'm afraid not. You'll excuse us. Wanna check your thing about? No extra charge. <laughs> All right, Andy. What's on your mind, Pendleton? Johnny Slade. Just a name to spoil a nice evening. Where is he? Over at the saloon. Waiting for you. I think I'll take a little walk. Could I have my guns, Andy? Jim, what's happened? Nothing. Just a little unfinished business. It won't take long. I've got to get out of here. You'll have to ask the doctor. There's someone to see you. Hello, Jill. It's nice of you to come. Did you sit down? Just read about your father. I'm afraid I'm not much good at words, but the minute I get out of here... No, no, that's why I came. You mustn't go back to Gunsight. 
Aren't you forgetting about your father? No. I haven't forgotten about him. When it first happened, my one thought was to find the man responsible and shoot him down without mercy, but that would only cause more killing. Killing won't bring back my father. Jim, the situation in Gunsight is hopeless. Even Dick Pendleton admits that it's an outlaw capital. Sounds like one of his editorials. That doesn't change the fact that I have some unfinished business with Johnny Slade. But what chance have you got? It's not only him. It'll be you alone against that whole gang. I don't figure I'll be exactly alone. I can always count on Andy and Pendleton. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing I can say to change your mind. No. Even if it wasn't for your father, I'm not used to having people shoot me in the back without doing something about it. Good luck, Jim Park. I'll be praying for you. Well, if it isn't our crusading editor. By this time tomorrow, I'll be running things around here. Haven't you always? Up until now, no. But from now on, yes. You want to see me? I understand you're acting as Miss Layton's legal advisor. In a way, yes. I've made out the papers for the sale of gunsight. Have you got them with you? Yes. Well, hand them over. I'm going out to the ranch to close the deal. You know, Pendleton, you haven't been very helpful to me. You've tried to block this deal every way you could. Naturally. Too bad. You know, if you'd have been a little more cooperative with me, I might have overlooked some of your editorials. As it is, you and your newspaper are washed up in this town. You're suggesting that I start dismantling my printing press? You guessed it. Of course, uh, I suppose you'll be at the ranch uh, as her advisor. You can count on that. Jim, you mustn't go into town. Johnny Slade knows you're riding in. I thought we settled all of that. But it's not only Johnny Slade. That detective's in town, too. The one that almost arrested you in Buffalo Junction. Mm. You mean Captain Street? Looks like they're closing in on both sides. Guess I'll just have to take my chances. What chances? There aren't any. It's just suicide. Jill, your dad thought a lot of that town of his. He fought for it, and now it's yours. Well, it won't be mine much longer. What do you mean? I'm selling gun sight. To Higgins? Grandma and I are leaving just as soon as it's over. Jill, will you do me a favor? What? Ride back to your place and do a little more praying. Jim! Adios. I'll be seeing you. like the reception committee is waiting. after my hide again. Oh, he is, eh? Hold it, Pendleton. This fight is strictly private. Good hunting.
You made a mistake coming back here. Think so? I'm sure of it. I told you once you'd guessed wrong. We might have had business together. If you hadn't let a pretty face pull you back on the other side of the fence. So it means shooting my way out of town? That's the only way you'll get out, Jim Parker. You've made a mistake. No, he hasn't. Reach, Parker. Don't you try anything, Higgins. You'll have two of us to kill. Make it three. You're wrong, Andy. It's four. You're welcome to him, Detective. Thank you. Where's your horse? Across the street. Get it, Andy, and take it over to your feed barn. Suppose you're one of his gang. No, sir. Uh, I mean, we're just friends. Friends? You'll be cellmates. Aiding and abetting a criminal is a penitentiary offense. Sorry, Andy. Didn't intend to get you involved. You mean they'll... <coughs> Looks like it. Listen, Captain. It's all dang simple. I can explain the whole thing. Come on, Cap. If you don't get these cuffs off, I'm beginning to think I really am Jim Parker. <laughs> You know, I'm beginning to believe that myself. It's all right, Andy. But you ain't what you are. That is, you, you, you are what you ain't. Captain Street and I are working together. But he's a detective. So am I, for the Union Pacific. We came here to try to get a line on a gang that got away with 50,000 in gold bullion. Well, I'll be a cross-eyed coyote. <laughs> You know, I'm almost convinced that Higgins is really Harley Dawson. Up to a few moments ago, I'd have sworn he was. But now I'm not so sure. You stay here and keep your eye on that praying press. I'm tailing Higgins. Well, what for? Haven't time to explain now. Just don't let that praying press out of your sight. Well, what are you waiting for? You heard him. Keep your eye on that printing press. I don't know whether I'm going or coming. I'll go, dear. Oh, so it's you. Good morning, Mrs. Layton. What's good about it? Well, it... Come in, Mr. Higgins. Pardon me. Howdy, Miss Layton. Now, you'll find this in proper legal form. One-fourth purchase price now and the rest within 90 days. Have you a pen? Yes, it's over in the desk. Pardon me. Pardon me. Are you satisfied? Yes, it seems to be all right. All right, my foot. It's all wrong if you ask me, which nobody has. Grandma, please. It's all for the best. Now, if you'll sign. In this space? No, that's for my signature. Yours goes at the bottom of the page. Well, that's done. And you'll never regret it. You and Grandma can travel now. Take life easy. Oh, I suppose so. Uh, may I have the pen? 
Oh, yes, of course. You have to sign, too, don't you? I think not. From here on in, I'm taking over. What do you mean? I thought it was all settled. I changed my mind. As a front, you serve your purpose. From now on, I'm top man. You mean you're grabbing everything? Don't worry. You and the boys will get your cut. But my name goes on that deed. Your real name? You're forgetting something, aren't you? You know, all I've got to do is start talking. I guess I figured wrong this time. Harvey Dawson. Sorry you heard that. I suppose now you're not above shooting down women. It's the easiest way to keep their mouths closed. Oh, you wouldn't dare. You're only bluffing. I don't have to bluff. Now when I blame the whole thing on my friend Higgins. That's all, Dawson. But you know it isn't polite to feed a lady lead. You should read the etiquette column in that paper of yours. Harvey Dawson, hiding behind a mass of printer's ink. Always knew you were smart. Thanks. You haven't been doing so badly yourself, Parker. Yeah, but I was never in your class. You know, I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Well, now that you have, well, maybe we could team up. Afraid not. In the first place, I'm not Jim Parker. I'm Sunset Carson, Union Pacific Railroad detective. And when I said just now I wanted to meet you, I wasn't kidding. You had me fooled for a while until I started checking back on a few things. I urge you, Mr. Layton, to go to the governor. Direct. And bringing word that Johnny Slade wanted to see me. Thanks to you, I walked right into a bullet. Anything else? Yeah. I'm anxious to get another look at that printing press of yours. Come on, let's get going. At your service. Now drop your other gun. Let me go. Now you and Granny, get in the closet. Don't you, Granny, me, you... Hurry up. Unless you want to see her get this knife in her back. Get in. You all right, Granny? Not a scratch. I certainly have to hand it to you, Sonny. You get things figured out in advance. In this business, you have to figure out things. If you want to stay alive, how to get out of here. Sonny! Save your strength for Mr. Pendleton. This door needs the feminine touch. Granny, what a safe cracker you would have made. Oh, if I were only 50 years younger. Why, Granny? Well, well are we going to stand here all day and let him fight the whole town alone? Go on, get a move on you and go down to the barn and hitch up the buckboard and the team and I'll collect the artillery. Now, go on. Our friend Smith is a Union Pacific detective. I think I got him, but I'm not sure. He might be coming back into town. Now, you guys lay for him. And if he does show up, let him have it. And this time, be sure to finish the job. Don't worry. It'll be a pleasure. Just in case, we'll get some help. A 
something gone wrong? That's what we'd like to know. Pendleton just rolled in and told the Higgins gang to knock you off. It might clear up things a little if I told you Pendleton was really Harvey Dawson. Harvey Dawson is Pendleton? What? The train robber? Yeah. And what's more, that gun side target you've been reading has been printed on solid gold. What are you talking about? We'll find out as soon as we take care of Pendleton. You say they're waiting for me in town? They sure are, armed to the teeth. Yep. Remember that gag we pulled down in Waco? Sure. Might work again. Now you fellows sneak back into town, get inside the barn and stay there. Don't let anyone see you. Right. What's this all about? Oh, you'll find out. Tommy, take that wagon. You three, take that wagon. You two go over there. Cornered. They fell for it. Show yourself. He can't have much lint left. Let him waste it. That must be Captain Street, that other detective. Grandma, turn me loose. If the town finds out you nabbed me, I'll never live it down. You've lived long enough. But, Grandma, I'm supposed to be a bad man. Some bad man. Granny! Granny, are you all right? Never felt better in my life. Come on, let's go. Are you all right? 
What are you two doing here? We figured you'd need a little help. Now, what's all the mystery about this printing press? Come on, I'll show you. Watch him, Andy. There's a Union Pacific Gold. You mean they melted it down to that? Yep, that's where you stashed it. You're pretty smart fellas. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sunset, let's get moving. Oh, Granny, you guard the bullion. Excuse me. You're not gonna let Sunset get away, are you? Well, what'll I do? I'll tie in Brandy Moral to Sonia. Come on. Skedaddle. 